here's a video on using your CAS calculator to find area, percentages, probabilities, and z-scores in a standard normal distribution. So if you remember, this is what our standard normal distribution looks like. Um, we have this curve, and uh, zero is the mean, and we have um, our z-scores of 1, 2, and 3 corresponding to 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations above the mean, and z-scores of negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 corresponding to um, 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations below the mean. So the first problem I want to show you here is finding the uh, probability of a z-score being greater than 1.52 which is essentially the same as finding the area to the right of z equals 1.52. So we know that z equals 1.52 is about right here. So we want to know the uh, probability of greater than 1.52 or the area to the right. Well, when we did this with the table, uh, and I'm not going to show you the table today because uh, you've already done this with the table, you know how to do that. Uh, so I'm not going to revisit that method. I'm just going to show you what our table value is. So our table value for z equals 1.52 is 0 0.9357. And because it's the area to the right, uh, we want to get rid of everything to the left, so we have to subtract that value from 1. So our solution using the table value was to subtract that 0 0.9357 from 1, and we get 0 0.0643. So let's see now how it's done on the calculator. Let's bring up our calculator here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to select uh, Menu, Statistics, Distributions, and this number 2, which is Normal CDF. Now, we're going to see this box here. It has lower bound, upper bound, mu, and sigma. Our lower bound is our left side value, which is 1.52. Now you may be asking what the upper bound is. So let's go back to our uh, uh, curve for just a second and look. What is to the right of 1.52? Well, because this curve is asymptotic, meaning it never touches the x-axis, it goes all the way out to positive infinity. So how we're going to put that in our calculator for the upper bound is we're going to select this pi key here, and then we're going to get this little box of choices, and we're going to select infinity and put it in there. Leave mu at 0, leave sigma at 1. Of course, this tells us that we're working with a standard normal distribution. Let's push OK, and we see we get a um, probability or a, um, a percentage of zero point, or an area, I'm sorry, of 0 0.064256. And remember our answer from the table is 0 0.0643. So if we round that up uh, to four decimal places, we get a very good answer here. So now let's go to our next example problem. Let's talk about area to the left. Again, here's our curve. So what I want to look at here is I want to say, find the probability of, of z being less than 1.35 or finding the area to the left of z equals 1.35. So 1.35, again, is about right in here. And remember, on the table method, we just go to the table and we find the uh, table value for z equals 1.35, and that is our answer, 0.9. 115. Well, the calculator is slightly different. We have to give it some an upper bound and a lower bound, as you saw in the last example. So we want to say everything that's to the left of 1.35. Well, that to the left, it, because the curve is asymptotic again and goes on forever, it goes out to negative infinity on this side. So let's put that in our calculator. Again, we're going to push menu, statistics, uh, distributions, uh, normal CDF. And it's already set with the lower bound of negative infinity, which, which is what we want. 
and our upper bound of course is going to be 1.35 leaving everything else alone let's press OK and you see we get a an area or a probability of 0 0.911492 and of course that would round up to 0 0.9115 which is what we got from our table well, so far so good here I should caution you at this point that when you're using your calculator, especially on an exam or a test, you need to tell the grader where you got your value from because sometimes your calculator will return a value which is slightly less or slightly more. So make sure you always write whether you got your answers from the table or from your calculator and especially what type of calculator you used. Okay, our next example and now this is one that's frust most frustrating for a lot of students is finding the area or probability uh, between two values. Remember finding the area between uh, two Z scores and finding the probability that um, Z is between two scores is the same method again. Uh, there's no difference and what we want to find here is between 1.23 which is about right here and negative 1.57 which is about right here so that's all this that's all this in between here so we're going to remember with our table method we found the table values for z equals 1.23 which was 0 0.8907 Found the table value for z equals negative uh, 1.57 as 0 0.0582 and the way we got our solution was to subtract the smaller from the larger and we get 0 0.8325 so that's our probability or our area between the two uh, Z values or two Z scores so let's see how we do that on the calculator it's pretty much the same as we did before but now we've got some values to enter in our little box there so we're going to push menu, statistics, uh, distribution, normal CDF. Now our lower bound, of course, that is negative 1.57. And our upper bound was uh, 1.3, uh, was it 1.32 or 1.23? Let me check, make sure, 1.23, 1.23, leaving everything else alone. We see we get 0 0.832444. And you see this will never round up to 0 0.8325. So like I said um, a couple minutes ago, is that you need to be sure that you put down where you got your answer from. So your at least your professor or your teacher uh, can see that you got your answer from someplace else other than a table. So the last thing I want to do, and which is the coolest thing, and which is the thing that takes the longest time and, and I think is the most frustrating for st statistics students is finding a z-score corresponding to a particular percentage. So remember this was kind of uh, weird because we had to go into the body of the table and search for a percentage. So remember that 87% um, we're going to take a look at this curve here and approximately figure out where we think our z-score is going to be. So remember 0 is 50 percent and 1 is about 84 percent because this area here, this area here is 34.13 percent. So that's 84 percent. So 87 percent is going to be slightly above here. So this is about 87 percent is right here. So we know we should get a z-score uh, somewhere between uh, 1 and 2, slightly more than 1. So when we did this on our table, we went to the body of the table and we had to scan and we had to find the uh, percentage which is closest to 0 0.87. And on our table, that percentage was 0 0.8708. And when we looked at our table, we see that corresponded to a z-score of 1.13. So we took that as our solution. So now, let's see how that's done on the calculator and the calculator is a big time saver here we're going to push menu statistics distribution and now we're going to see this other selection here inverse normal 
I'm going to select that inverse normal and here where it says area we're just going to put our percentage in here as a decimal form and that was again um, 87 so we're just going to put 0 0.87 in that box leave uh, mu as 0 and sigma as 1 again push OK and what we get here is 1.12639 which can very easily be rounded up to 1.13 again this is the big time saver here um, especially on an exam where time is very important uh, this will save you a precious seconds in uh, finding a z-score for a particular percentage or uh, probability um, I hope you use this uh, again I uh, think this method is, is, is very good and um, whatever you do just uh, remember always put down where you got your answer whether you got it from a table or whether you got it from your calculator